Good evening, folks. It's time for part two of my homemade expansion chamber video series. And today I'm going to show you how I made a variable angle slip roller out of stuff that you can get at the local hardware store. 90% of this stuff. So, what you see here is my, this is my second prototype. It's actually in the same frame as the first one. The first one I just had two rollers that just put the shafts right through here and you can move them in and out two holes and the middle one just went up and down in between them. Now I found that way you couldn't quite get the uh, extremely tight radii you need for this because you couldn't move the center roller all the way in between the outer rollers. So, and even with the extremely limited variation in the angle you can get by just moving it to the inner and the outer holes, on either end, you can get only, you know, two different angles and you can split them either way, but I was still able to roll up cones, even like this one, with the device set up like that. I just had to do a lot of finishing of this one on the mandrel, which, you know, you got to do a little final tapping on the mandrel no matter what. But this way, you can really get it, you know, nice without having to do so much adjusting. So what I've done here is, you see, I just took some angle iron, welded up this frame, all the same crap. Nice big eye bolt here with wing nuts because you're going to be moving this, you're going to be adjusting this one up and down. And I did that on both sides. So I can move either end up and down. And it's a little loose in there, but once there's tension on it, it stays put. And you can just kind of spin it by hand. What I do, I welded a bolt in the end here. And I just use this socket in my drill and I can spin it while kind of manipulating the piece of sheet metal with the other hand. You just gotta be careful you don't suck your finger under it, which happens, but you know, I go slow, keep it on the drill on low speed. And when I can manage that, I just twist it by hand, it's not that hard to do really. And you can put a crank on the end, use a socket wrench, whatever. It works alright. How to get your variable angles here is the trick. They have these wonderful things called ball swivel ball ends here. Now these ones, if you loosen up this bolt here, this will spin, or this will not spin, but it'll, it'll move inside and out. See these move? You pivot. And you can move wherever you want. And because these are ball swivel, it doesn't matter. That swivel will point whatever direction you want up to like, I think it's 25 degrees off center. So you can really manipulate these a lot. And they'll go any way you want them to go. Now this end doesn't move as far. It doesn't really have to. Uh, this end moves a lot farther. You can wiggle these ones all the way in or all the way out. And you can move them into another hole and even get a wider angle. It wasn't that hard. This one, because I put this piece here like so, it hits that part and doesn't really... Let's move all that far, but this is for the pointy end, this is for the broad end. But you can make it work symmetrically if you really wanted to. Now this is just common gas pipe. I believe this is uh, probably three quarter inch. And they make these neat little bushings, 5 16 bushings. And these tab right into the end of half inch gas pipe. And half inch gas pipe will pound right into the end of three quarter inch gas pipe. So I just cut a piece of this off, pound it in there, pound the bushing in there. 5 16 rod. When you need to move it, you just pull this all the way in and out. You slide it at the other end, and it comes out. And it should go into the other. Not easy to do with one hand holding the camera, but there we go. And that just comes up. And here's where you can see the ball, the, the ball swivel. I'll show you that. And that just kind of can go any which way you want it to go. So, and that's a 5 16 So that fits this rod perfectly. And again, this rod, the bushings, the gas pipe, and even in some really cool hardware stores like mine, these ball swivel rod ends, 5 16 And all this steel, this is a 1 inch by 3 16 just plain mild steel. And I've got a bolt threaded into here, so when I get it adjusted, I can thumb screw this one in and lock it in place, and then crank the living hell out of this one. If you don't, then it will move when you're trying to start putting pressure on it. But you crank the hell out of it, Tighten this one down as a set screw. I didn't have a problem. I was able to roll all these cones you see here. This one, this one, and this one. And even this one, but this is something I've already started mitering, so it doesn't look like a cone anymore, but it is a taper piece. I'm just cutting three sections. I've got to make this in the L shape, or the U shape, and this piece has to be mitered too. Because actually the pipe starts here, and goes to this point, and then goes to this part. I haven't loaded this together yet, but I'm getting there. And, uh, yeah, so just a couple of things to think about when you're making one of these. <clears throat> is, uh, make sure you make it long enough for your longest piece of cone. 
you know what your pipe's gonna look like, you know, and that's your limit. So this is my longest piece of individual cone, so that was my uh, restrictor. Luckily, it's just about two foot sections of gas pipe, which are already cut at that length, are readily available. And uh, I just bought a four footer and cut it in half, as you can see, there's only one thread of end on each one. And um, you can make smaller ones, these rollers. I actually have a smaller set in case I need to make something tighter or whatever, but these seem to work okay. I could do them all with this set and, and this, this central one. And basically as you're going along, you just, you know, lay it in there. Before you start rolling it, you always want to kind of start the ends, just pound them over a little bit on a mandrel, which what I do for that. I made these from the hardware store. Just simple gas pipe flanges, a piece of the angle iron. Just kind of grind a notch in there, weld that on. You can screw them to your workbench. You can lay a piece of gas pipe of any size in there, and when you set it down, you can lay your piece of sheet metal on there and just pound the end down and just start, start the lip a little bit because you're not going to be able to get the last half inch to start to lip over with this thing. So you start it a little bit, you know, you pre-start pre -start it. You get it pre-radiused before you put it in the roller. And that way you don't kind of finish that part off on the mandrel and your seams kind of point together right. Otherwise it looks like that. Um, so. Yeah, like both ends swivel, so you can really get it just the angle you need. Now, the one important, another important thing is these have to be pretty much equally spaced from their respective ends. So you can get one of these things, which is nice. These are available at garage sales everywhere for, you know, about 25 cents. I have a million of them because I buy them whenever I see them. And you can just move them in and out and tighten them in place, and then you can use them to compare your distance is between each side and make sure they're symmetrical. That's what they're for. They're calipers. The old school guys used to use these for measuring cylinder bores and all kinds of stuff. And they worked. <laughs> so I've got a pair of outside ones. I got little tiny ones. I got giant ones. I got ones that screw lock in the middle. These ones are spring loaded. But they're a really nice tool to have. I use them a lot in this cone making process for more than just this. Now, another thing is uh, mine sets up on these four inch pieces of aluminum ice because. This sticks down so low, and you need it to stick down low so you can get it down far enough to really get your tight radii. And uh, that's about it. It's pretty simple. Like I said, all the stuff available at local hardware store. Nothing complicated about it. Um, and like I said, it worked. I swear to you, I made this cone and that cone and that cone with this thing. It did not cost 800 bucks. It only cost, you know, that's a piece of gas pipe, five bucks piece of the steel maybe 10 20 bucks these are about four or five bucks a piece depending on where you get them i had to go to mcmaster car because my hardware store doesn't stock enough of these they have like two or three in a drawer because no one who else buys these things you know but they do have they have all kinds of stuff in my local attorney's ace hardware store but i did get the wing nuts and the eye bolts and all the steel everything else everything except for those things came from my local ace so it can be done it was done you do not need to go to a sheet metal guy and wait a month for him to feel like doing it for you. Alright, and I think that's about it. Any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments.